Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I was always thinking about doing Q&A sessions, so I asked for questions in a community post and you guys did not disappoint. I got great questions from you, so thank you for those great questions. As I was working on answering those questions, I realized that the video will be too long if I answer all questions in a single video. So in this video, I will focus on the top voted question, which was how to land a more senior data scientist job. What would be different from preparing for an entry and mid-level role? This is a fantastic question from Jin Yu. Thanks for posting it. It got 12 votes in total, making it the highest voted question and for good reasons. This question is so good, I'm devoting an entire video to answer it. Before we dive into answering this question, I want to put out a small disclaimer. I was not a senior data scientist. When I worked at my previous company, Airbnb, I transitioned from data science to engineering, so I was never in a senior data scientist position. But I have gained knowledge about what differentiates junior and senior data scientists from my colleagues and by interviewing senior data scientists. Okay, now let's really dive in. First of all, when it comes to interviewing for senior versus entry-level positions, the process may not look too different. In many companies, the interview process is the same for entry-level and senior data scientist positions. There are technical rounds such as statistics, SQL and coding, and non-technical rounds such as behavioral interviews. I consider interviews like product case interviews or presentations as a combination of technical and non-technical skills. If the interview process is the same, how does the company determine whether you are a senior or mid-level? Truthfully, companies typically have a standard already in place. While there are outliers, you cannot fake your experience. To land a senior position often requires around 4-5 to five years of experience if you have a master's degree, or 2-3 to three years of experience if you have a PhD. That is to say, it may require more than 5 years of experience if you have a bachelor's degree. So, in many ways, seniority is predetermined. However, that does not mean there's nothing you can do to influence your placement and position in a company. I know people who did great in the interview and landed a senior position even though they only had less than two years of experience. Recently, one of my clients interviewed with Facebook for an individual contributor or IC position and was offered a management position instead. So it does happen. There is also a flip side of this. I know people who did not do well in the interviews and were offered positions that were lower than their experience might dictate. Your experience matters and so does how you present yourself in the interview. So to answer this question, I am going to talk about three different interview areas where you can showcase that you deserve a more senior position. And those three areas are product case interview, behavioral interview, and presentation. The product case interview is one of the first areas in which you have a chance to display skills that could lead to a more senior position. A product case interview is all about your problem-solving skills. While both a senior and entry-level data scientists need to be able to solve problems, someone who deserves a senior position has solutions that stand out. But how do you make your solutions stand out, right? There are three ways to demonstrate a higher level of problem-solving skills that could help you land a senior position. The first way is to consider the specific context of the problem rather than following a framework rigidly. When I say specific context, it includes the business model, the stage of the coming, and the unique aspects of a product. Anyone can memorize a framework and follow it to come up with an answer. Doing that will not prove you have the experience and ability deserving a more senior position. In fact, if you start with a framework right away after getting a question, it may sound a bit too reactive. For example, some people consider the natural next step to evaluate any hypothesis is to use A-B testing. However, there are cases doing an A-B testing is not feasible, such as resource constraints or the requirement of A-B testing is not met. Imagine that you're asked to select a few ideas among many ideas for an early stage e-commerce business. We won't simply A-B test every single idea because it will be costly and time consuming. More importantly, it's not necessary. If we have data on users' preferences, browsing behaviors, and purchase histories, we could gain lots of insights by looking at the data and see which part has the most demand and opportunity, so that we can determine which ideas make more sense than others. Another example is diagnosing a problem with Robinhood where the trade activity is decreasing. You may follow a framework to go over factors such as seasonality, external events, and user segments, 
However, if you don't take the time to clarify things like how much is the change, what kind of activity is decreasing, is it stock or crypto, etc., it becomes clear that you are following framework without considering the specific context of the exact problem. Remember that frameworks are generic while problems are specific. You want to show awareness and understanding of the product itself and the goal of the company. Frameworks are a useful tool, but you also want to demonstrate your capability on individual thinking and coming up with specific solutions. Another way to show advanced problem-solving skills is by considering potential issues or pitfalls with a question. For example, Facebook has asked you to improve the accuracy of birthday data. Many candidates would immediately jump into their methods and the data that will be used to achieve this. However, a more experienced candidate might first ask things like, why do we need it? And do we only need the month and date, or we also need the year information? An experienced candidate recognizes that there might be privacy issues there that should be taken into account when determining a solution. If you want a senior position, you need to show not only an ability to work with the data, but also a competence for understanding potential problems and obstacles. Finally, a senior data scientist shows strategic thinking in product case interview. What is strategic thinking? To put it simply, it's the ability to think beyond the numbers. When running an experiment, the result is important. However, there are many things that need to be considered at the same time. For instance, Uber is testing a new referral program to acquire new drivers. The experiment showed that the program will lose money in the short term. That might make it seem like the program is a bad idea, but the program might still have strategic benefits. Acquiring more drivers results in a better supply to serve the demand. Also, newly acquired drivers may refer more drivers to the platform. Both may eventually increase Uber's market share and help keep its competitive advantage. So, a senior data scientist knows how to think beyond the numbers. They consider multiple aspects of a problem to determine what best meets the goal of the company. To differentiate yourself as a senior data scientist, it's important to demonstrate an ability to think strategically about the problem at hand. Now that we will look at the product case interview, let's examine how you can differentiate yourself in the behavioral interview. The behavioral interview is where you will discuss your past experience, and as we mentioned in the introduction, you cannot fake experience. Still, how you present your experience can make a difference. In behavioral interviews, you will not simply be listing your experience like you would on a resume. You'll be asked questions that require you to tell stories about your past, and each question will typically focus on a particular attribute. You'll be asked things like, describe a time you dealt with a conflict, or tell me about the time you had to work under a strict deadline. These questions are clearly looking to examine your conflict resolution and time management skills. If you want your experience and abilities to stand out, go beyond just the attribute that the question is obviously asking about. Display multiple dimensions of yourself with each answer. Remember that you are not only answering the question, but also presenting yourself as a professional and a person. To land a senior position, you want to show that you possess attributes that would make you a good choice for a higher position. Some positive attributes include leadership, responsibility for the team, and the ability to thrive in ambiguity. Fine-tune your stories to show that you are willing to go above and beyond, care about the overall team's success, and can drive and deliver impact. Besides doing that, you have the attributes that would allow you to be successful in a senior position, you also want to show your interest and that you can be proactive. How do you do this? Take the time to prepare good questions for interviewers. Having good questions to ask at the end of an interview is a chance to show that you can take the lead and drive the conversation, rather than simply reacting to questions, which is a necessary skill for someone looking for a senior position. Having good questions also indicates that you have thought extensively about the position and that you are truly interested in it. Now, let's look at one more area where you can differentiate yourself as a senior, presentations. Some companies will ask you to present past projects in an interview. This is an especially good way to evaluate seniority. An effective data scientist has to be a good presenter. You must be able to convince stakeholders to buy into your ideas. A presentation gives you a chance to show interviewers how you can drive a situation and how convincing you can be. There are a few things to remember to keep your presentation effective. First, present your best stuff. 
And by that, I mean present something that isn't too easy. Projects that don't have any challenges, limitations, or obstacles do not tell the interviewer much about your experience. Interviewers prefer to hear about a challenging project, even with some limitations, instead of an easy project that is 100% successful. By presenting on a project with challenges, you can show your skillfulness and adaptability far better than you can when everything goes smoothly. Another way to make the most of your presentation is to highlight your impact. Try to focus on I instead of we. Clearly explain your contribution to the project in the end-to-end -end execution of an idea. Being able to drive a project is a strong indicator of experience. For example, when it's a big project involving multiple teams, how you collaborate with other professionals. Did you provide insight to help the product manager with narrowing down the scope of the work? Did you consider implementation feasibility for engineers, etc.? Those aspects will be a big plus for senior data scientists. Finally, be sure to maintain a good and professional attitude towards questions and suggestions. The behavior interview is not the only part of an interview where your behavior is being evaluated. Presentation is also a good way to evaluate that. As you present, be sure to truly listen to questions and other remarks your audience might make. Companies want data scientists who are willing to listen to others' opinions. So even though you might take the lead when presenting, do not forget to be attentive to your audience and whatever requests they may make. Accept questions and feedback openly. In fact, there are more tips I'd love to share with you guys in terms of delivering a good presentation. I plan to devote a whole video about it in the future. But anyways, those are three areas you can differentiate yourself as a senior data scientist in interviews. Remember, as I said at the beginning, most companies have preset standards for seniority. While it is crucial to meet the requirement, you may not get a senior position if you cannot present yourself well in the interview. So that's my answer to our top voted question from the Q&A. Thanks again to Jin Yu for asking it. I will be making another Q&A video to answer some of the other top voted questions. Next up will be how to prepare for product data scientist positions with big tech companies, what preparation strategy to use, what resources to use, how to have a deep understanding of A-B testing and past product case interviews when my work does not provide opportunities on A-B testing, how to answer follow-up questions in case interviews. Those are all great questions and I will share my honest opinion on all of them. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching, stay tuned, I will see you soon.